spending authority of two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Excellent. Any questions? Hearing none. Thank you. Okay. The next item, JMI six one three dash one nine, social studies. Wait a minute here. I missed something. Mm -hmm. Sorry about right. that. Um, physics textbooks, ARA 226-19. This is a new contract to provide a physics textbook for high school stu resource for students uh, enrolled in the Next Generation Science Standard Aligned Course Integrated Physics and Chemistry. Approval is requested for a four-year contract. Just want to make sure. Um, with one recommended vendor and contract spending authority of $250,000. Any questions, board members? Hearing none. Okay. Item three, ARA 212-19, kindergarten through grade three phonics program. This is a new contract to provide a comprehensive foundational skills reading program with digital resources to support grades K through three students in order to improve reading achievement for the Office of English Language Arts. Approval is requested for a six-year contract with one recommended vendor and contract spending authority of $6 million. Mr. McMillian. Mr. McMillian. I'm curious, will, will all of our K through three students across Baltimore County Public Schools benefit from this? Expenditure? Ultimately, yes. So the first year, the request, we, um, if you remember, we requested funds for K and 1 for year 1, and then year 2, our hope is to roll out to second and third. But in each year, when we do a grade level, it is for every classroom across all of Baltimore County Public Schools. Thank you. Welcome. Ms. Rowe? So has this curriculum uh, been reviewed by the Curriculum Committee? Yes. Okay. And can you just briefly? explain the digital resources. I know that we're not using iReady anymore. Correct. Is this to replace that? No, um, it is different. There is a digital component. The majority of this purchase is for the teacher materials. So, and I'm sure you can review the curriculum committee presentation. We actually brought the kit. So the majority of the purchase is for the teacher materials. There is a digital component that allows the students to play games aligned with phonemic awareness for practice and to see the um, decodable stories or the sound spelling cards digitally. Um, so it may replace some of the class time that students formerly used iReady during the rotation of small group instruction. However, it is very different in that the open court resource is not adaptive. Um, this is open court, yes. That's what this is. So there is a digital component, but it is not adaptive the way the iReady software works. Yeah, and I'd just like to clarify, these are resources, it's not the curriculum itself. Okay. Just, I just want to continue to help clarify people's understanding around the difference between what curriculum is and isn't and what resources are and what they aren't. So thank you. I admit I really don't understand that at all. <laughs> if you could explain it again, that would be fantastic. So Megan, would you like to I go ahead? I was going to say, I can take this or you can. If you <laughs> and let's make this quick. We, sure. Ms. Rowe, we would be happy to um, because I know that this is a contracts committee, so I don't want to derail right. the purpose of the, the committee, but I do feel it's our responsibility to continue to support you in your understanding and your role. So curriculum is the entirety of the roadmap, so it includes the standards, the assessments, the resources, and the instructional materials. So if you think of that as being the larger umbrella, that really is the um, dedicated roadmap that teachers follow in order to ensure students meet the standards. Part of designing curriculum is to identify resources and materials to support that instruction. So open court is an actual resource and instructional material to support the curriculum around the phonics standards. Okay, so this that is helps. just one component of what we're doing then? Yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Okay. The next item, JMI 613-19. Social Studies Digital Map Service. This is a new contract to provide for a web-based repository of maps and geographical resources to support grades K through 12 students and teachers. Approval is requested for a three-year contract with one recommended vendor and contract spending authority of $114,000. Fantastic, any questions? Okay, hearing none, thank, thank you. you. 
Uh, item 5, ARA 213-19. Uh, this is an RFP, Sheltered Instruction Observation <laughs> Protocol. This is a new competitively bid contract to provide for professional development to classroom and content teachers who work with a large number of English learners on sheltered instruction observation protocol for the Office of ESOL. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $600,000. Thank you. Ms. Rouse. What exactly is sheltered instruction? What do you mean by that? So the teachers who participate in the professional learning learn different strategies to use with students that are English learners. These same strategies are beneficial really for all children. So an example might be something like a word wall or using visuals to uh, pre-teach vocabulary that they might be using. So it's different strategies that they learn in the um, professional learning that they receive. Okay, the next mm -hmm. item six, LKO 427-19, Instructional Materials for Technology Education. This is a new cooperative contract to provide instructional materials for the Office of Career and Technology Education and Fine Arts. Approval is requested for a two-year, eight-month contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $80,000. Back, Ms. Che. Hi. <laughs> Could you describe the materials that are being purchased with this sure. authority? Sure. Um, this is for all the materials used in our high, sc um, high school tech ed classes, including foundations of engineering and advanced design applications. So this would be used to purchase things like gears, electric motors, balsa wood, batteries, um, electric circuit templates, gizmos, gadgets, <laughs> that kind of thing, to support the tech ed project-based learning. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. McMillian? And, and the description, it mentions grades four through 12. Yes, sir. So how does it, you mentioned just said high schools. So right, how does so that, that, that is a, that's a great question. So um, we have been expanding project-based learning. So in many cases, um, in our science classes, for example, in the elementary level, um, students are beginning to experiment with different makerspace opportunities or designing solutions to problems as part of our science um, curriculum. So that any purchases teachers made along those lines could also fall under this curriculum. And then in our middle school programming, um, as part of the ESSA requirements, we now have to expose all of our middle school students at least once in grades six through eight to computational learning courses. And some of those include Project Lead the Way. And so um, any of the teachers or classes that are doing some of the project-based learning as part of Project Lead the Way would also purchase against this contract. So that's designed to be really all-inclusive should the need arise for teachers to purchase any of those same materials. Thank you. Got it. The next item, CWA 114-19, Printing of Student Handbooks. This is a new competitively bid contract to provide for the printing and packaging of student handbooks. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $325,000. Good afternoon. Mr. McMillian. Good afternoon. I know that we have a print shop. Is it the fact that we're using an outside vendor to print this material is because it's such a large project? That's correct. Thank you. Other questions? Hearing none, thank you. Thank you. Item eight, CWA 116-19, milk, dairy, and fruit juice products. This is a new competitively bid contract to provide for fresh milk, juice, and yogurt for use in, use in school breakfast, lunch, snack, supper, and summer programs for the Office of Food and Nutrition Services. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of 18 and three quarters million dollars. funding sources the operating budget 
I was curious that none of this is funded through grants. Is that it's correct? the operating budget in the sense that it's the food and nutrition yeah. food and fund, nutrition's off fund right. versus yeah. grant funding. Right. Item 9, MWE 810-19 Chromebooks. This is a new competitively bid contract to provide for Chromebooks and carts for the Department of Information Technology. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with three recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $14,808,000. Good afternoon, Mr. Korn. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. And I'll open it up the floor up. I have several questions, but I'll allow my fellow board members to. How many actual ask Chromebooks are we talking about? <coughs> about 40,000. And these are the Chromebooks that are going to go one to five, K through three? Yes, sir. K through three, is yep. that correct? Uh, well, uh, the uh, ratio was uh, a five to one ratio grades K one and two, and then three, four, and five were at one to one. Okay, so the forty thousand dollars is included in three, four, five, or forty thousand devices. The forty thousand devices will outfit all of elementary at the <coughs> ratios that were specified. Thanks. Okay. And Ms. Rowe, did you have a question before I ask mine? Okay, thank you. And which device was selected? <coughs> for the, uh, the, f the physical device. Physical uh, device. We uh, uh, selected the lowest price device from uh, CDW as the Lenovo. Uh, 300e okay fantastic and thank you for providing the specs and the bid mm -hmm. information that was very helpful so sure. I'll, that answered a lot of my questions mm -hmm. in advance so it'll make this process go a lot easier so I appreciate that our, our belief was that uh, with, given that we had multiple uh, devices that met our specifications a Chromebook is <coughs> as a Chromebook is a Chromebook so we we are looking at the lowest price for those devices. Okay, so this seeks is our um, approval to go with the Lenovo's through CDW, mm -hmm. um, and that is at the four-year lease. So you'll be uh, um, negotiating a four-year lease with CDW. Um, we've uh, we priced it both ways, mm -hmm. and we would recommend that we go with the three-year lease, uh, given that this is going to be our first experience in this endeavor and uh, to ensure that the materials last throughout the contract term, we thought it might be best to start with three years. Okay. Sounds good. So we would be expecting then for um, approval the three-year lease arrangement with CDW. Correct. Um, the cart, the lowest bidder was daily, I believe. Correct. Um, and that would be a purchase versus a lease, correct? Uh, that would still mistaken. be uh, a lease. Um, facing the car. Yeah. Okay. That, that's the best way to spread out the annual impact and save the most amount of money in any one budget year. And, of course, um, this, this conversion from two Chromebooks saves us about $16 million over three years. of the services, um, how will that be structured, the cart services and the device services? So, so Ms. Hen, we're, we're taking the entire process, mm -hmm. uh, all of the white gloving, all of the uh, you know, racking and stacking of the devices, all of that encompassed, and we're seeking to, to three-year lease that entire price so that at the end, the, everything is all in included. Is that the question? Sure. In terms of who will be the provider of that? So oh, so the white the white glove service would come this from. This is going to look like in terms of the agreements. Go gotcha. So the white glove service for the Chromebooks would come from CDW, and in the uh, oh. instance of the carts, the, the, the procurement of the carts would follow with with the, with the, the vendor as well as um, the licensure is a much easier thing uh, with lowest price from uh, data networks, uh, where that's simply a procurement of the license and a ap application to our Google environment. So the dropship and the, the on-site setup of the carts, that's going to be performed by data networks? No, no the li licenses are from data networks daily uh, right. with the lowest price on carts, yes. Yep. I'm with you. Thank yep. you. Uh -huh. okay. Thank you. I think I covered all of my questions. Like I said, most of them were answered in advance, so thank you very much for sure. providing that. Absolutely. Uh, Schoolman's or Ms. Rowe, did you have other questions? 
Yeah, Mr. McMillian. Back in the budget process, when we talked about trying to get out of some of these leases, mm -hmm. and I was under the impression that generally we could we could get out of things, and then when it came down to actually getting out out of some of these computer contracts, then it was decided that we couldn't get out of it, or if we did, it was going to be a real fight to get out of some of these contracts. Mm -hmm. Are these leasing agreements easier to get out of? If if we come and, you know, a year into this or a year and a half into this or something, we say, hey, wait a minute, this is not the, this is not working out, this is not the, the device that we want, or it's, it's not the better, better device at this point in time. Can we get out of this without going through with the three-year thing? So this is... Uh, similar to our existing agreement in that all three of these vendors proposed Hewlett Packard financing as the leasing company. And the and so the lease that we would be entering into would also have the non-appropriation clause, uh, which is the only way to get out of that lease. And what that means is that if the county elects to no longer fund the lease, then uh, they would take action at the county government level to, to terminate the lease. We, we could not do it um, in, uh, solely on our own. So it is the same situation. There's nothing really different here. Yeah, and that's what, why we, at at that, you know, 12th hour or whatever, we decided that we weren't going to, you know, we, we couldn't get rid of something because it would be litigation or whatever that we'd have to get the county government involved in the whole lease process. Right. So uh, to uh, let it leases expire is the best way to, uh, to get out of them. And every year, uh, a series of leases will expire. Okay. And, and, you know, I'm not a businessman. I don't pretend to be a businessman. But it just seems to me that if, if we have to wait until the lease expires, you know, isn't there another way to write that or to, to uh, another type of agreement to enter into that would let us get out of there if, if the product is not meeting, you know, our system needs? Um, not that I know of. Not that we've, that any of the vendors have proposed to us. Uh, because these materials are very inexpensive, uh, they, apart from the lease, uh, if we were to decide to terminate the lease, they would have very little value um, for resale or reuse. And so, uh, while it may have been somewhat different with the laptops, the Chromebooks would be even more difficult to negotiate out of because they just have so little residual value. I mean, it's a $229 item that costs the same, you know, as many textbooks or as many one or two textbooks together, depending on the type of subject matter so it's 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 really set up you to either buy them outright which we could do for you know 12 million dollars if we had 12 million dollars in the budget we don't um, or this lease arrangement um, so which once we're we enter it we're, we're in it and yeah, mr. McMahon, to, to your to your point um, we've also been running a pilot in nine elementary schools. And so the feedback that we've gotten from our pilot schools is um, uh, very positive. So when we talk about in a year, would we say this is the wrong device for us? We're standing on some pretty strong data that says that this device at this low price point is the device that we will need. So as uh, Mr. Saris was saying, we, the two options we have are to buy them outright or to uh, extend the cost over three years. Um, we are in full confidence that based on information we've received from other counties, uh, information we base from uh, received from our own schools, that this is the right device for our students. So my concern around uh, whether or not we would have made the wrong choice in this, I, I don't think it would be something we would worry about. 
Okay, and I'm just curious, those nine schools, what pilot schools are there? Do you know off the top of your head? As a matter if of fact. If not, time. you can get back to me on that. Uh, uh, yeah, let, let me get you the yeah. list. I, I have the list. Okay, uh, I just curious. don't want to shuffle papers. Thank you very much for answering my question. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, I did recall one other question I had, and that was I recall reading in the um, packet that was provided to bidders that they were asked to provide the option to purchase at the end of the lease mm -hmm. for us to be able to purchase, I believe, for $1 the mm -hmm. device. Is that, am I re recalling that accurately? And does the total um, cost or the lease price include that option, or is that on top of? I mean, it, it was. We, we would we would pay forty thousand dollars. Forty thousand dollars, yes. basically, at the end of the lease to purchase yep. the devices. Yep, and that's okay. uh, relative to the laptop buyout, which were closer to fifty dollars per unit with the with the HP device. So this is, you know, if these do last, and okay. under the shorter lease. We think that's our best option. We we will have a better opportunity to retain the valid or the operating devices. Okay. So, so at the end of three years, we will have the option to right. purchase forty thousand or some quantity, or some portion of them, any portion yeah. that is right. still in working order that we want to purchase right. for a dollar per unit. Mm -hmm. Correct. So uh, I have a list of schools. Um, so we went to Arbutus Elementary, Cedar Mirror. Church Lane, Cromwell Valley, Honeygo, Hillcrest, Oliver Beach, Orms, and Rogers Forge. I skipped one. We went to Mays Chapel in a very small um, pilot because they had a um, kind of an innovative uh, art uh, experience they were doing with the students, so we wanted to see how this would work in the fine arts. Uh, but So that would make 10, but not the nine um, pilots that we had the largest Im uh, impact. We deployed about 1,600 devices. Th those were the ones listed. <coughs> yes, sir. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Corns. It's too much. OK. Uh, yeah. uh, next uh, item. Go ahead, Pete. Next item, 10 ARA 219-19 is for storage tank inspection, repair, installation, and modification. Uh, a lot of these inspections are third-party inspections, and uh, we are given the list of repairs, and repairs are uh, conducted using this contract. Okay. Members, any questions? Hearing none. Thank you. Item 11, MWE 812-19. These are the compliance document for capital improvement program. We had shared with the board in the last meeting what those documents are, and in response to your request in the previous year, we gave you a month time to review it and have, have any questions. We have not received any questions, and we are requesting your approval. Okay. Ms. Rao? I just have one question. So this is something that has to be submitted to the state periodically. Would we do the long-term facilities plan Will this will this update it, or does this bind the long-term facilities plan? Good question. Uh, this is not long-term plan. This is a compliance document that that they, it, it is used in their format. A state or interagency commission they provide the format to us, and they require this information in that format. If and when we complete that long-range plan that's going to be added to next year's submission or part of that plan that fits the format of the requirement will be included in next year's plan. This is an annual document. It is, it is a compliance document and it's submitted before we submit the capital improvement program. Great. Any other questions? Mr. McLennan, are we good? Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, thanks. thanks, that's all we have. Thank you very much. Okay. Board members, do I have a motion to submit items T1 through T11 to the full board for approval? So moved. Is there a second? All in favor? Okay, that motion carries. Thank you. Um, with that, we are adjourned.